Oh yeah, he's he's oh, done. The other one. Hey, what's up everyone? I am getting ready and packed up right now so I can head out early tomorrow morning uh, to New Mexico. I'm meeting up with a friend of mine and you guys have seen his channel, I'm sure. If you haven't, check it out in the description. Um, but I'm gonna be meeting with Dan and we're gonna be doing a little New Mexico squirrel hunt. So it'll be about a seven hour drive. So I'm just gonna give you guys a rundown of what I've got packed as far as gear goes and uh, Hope you look forward to it. So, got the backpack with all the gear in here. So I got pellets. Um, of course, got my sweet hat. Uh, these awesome boots in case we traverse deep into the mist. Uh, again, some gifts. So I got my green hunting light in here, which is gonna be perfect for some nighttime hunting if we see any pests um, you know, if there's any fox or raccoons or something like that going after the chickens. Uh, clothes are packed in here. Got my sweet blenders, sunglasses. Thanks to Don Shula, aka Josh. Uh, got my custom hoodie. <laughs> Long story. And then got the old 25 cal FX Dreamline in here. And the side shot phone scope mount right here, ready to rock and roll. Uh, hand pump. So probably strap that to the backpack if we need a pump in the woods or if we're carrying a little bottle. Got a little cooler in case I kill a wildebeest or something and I need to store some meat for the drive back. I look terrifying. Uh, it's 420 right now um, and I'm just about to head down to New Mexico and uh, I'm freaking eat some squirrels. So wish me luck on the drive. So after a nice long drive down to New Mexico, Dan and I just spent the first day zeroing in the guns and making sure that they weren't having any issues. So we checked all of our equipment, made sure we were good to go on air, and then we decided it would be best to stick to the two guns that were shooting slugs and tuned for those slugs. Just because we'll be shooting at longer distances and there will be some windy conditions. So we kept the 25 cal Dreamline that was tuned for shooting 25 grain pellets at the house and we went out with the 30 cal impact and the 22 cal mark III wildcat uh, both guns did very well the slugs did really well in the wind and you guys are really going to appreciate the pop once you hear the 30 cals hit all right guys day two in the uh the camper here aka the gun the gun lounge we got masapan and we got dan working on the impact right now we're tuning that so what's what's the idea behind what we're trying to do with the impact today Dan? so I currently have it tuned for a EBR competition and I have it shooting uh, 30 uh, 44 grain pellets at about 900 feet per second and uh, that's putting one whole groups at 50 yards but uh, for prairie dogs and uh, for you guys that are watching I know you guys probably want to see maximum carnage and uh, I can t I usually have the impact tuned for 101 foot-pounds and uh, shooting these uh, 50 grain varmint knocker hollow point slugs from uh, from Dale, and uh, I can this gun the most accurate setting I've come up with I was able to shoot out 200 yards reliably uh, is to set the tune for uh, 945 feet per second. And uh, what I'm going to do now is make the settings, change the settings on it. I've got them documented what they were last time I had it at that, and I'm going to adjust everything now. And then we're going to go out and shoot some targets, make sure we're zeroed. We'll see what kind of damage they're doing. All right, guys, so we just got to the property here. We got Baggins right there. Um, and then Dan is just talking to the property owner. Uh, the road is behind us, and we're gonna be shooting the opposite direction. All right, guys, so as we're tucked away here in the trees and in the shade, in some cover, uh, Dan's setting up the Wildcat right now. We're getting the gun set up. We got the impact in that box. And uh, we're letting the sun start to come up and warm up a little bit otherwise the prairie dogs aren't going to come out so we uh we're seeing quite a bit of action right now out that way 
so we got all the goods all the gear everything set up here so we're gonna have a nice day of shooting from cover which is always nice and they won't be able to see where it's coming from so these trees really give us a good advantage for shooting out that way and we're in the shade so it's gonna be hard for them to see us Headshot. Get the barbed wire in front of him. Oh, oh, just head back up. Oh, that's good. shot on that second prairie dog first one he popped up I was trying to find the one in the scope couldn't find him and I accidentally looked at a different one he was right there head sticking out of the hole smoked him next one took a couple shots I had a hard time finding him with all this brush in front of us so the scope kept picking up on the brush instead of just past it where the prairie dog was so had to take a couple shots, but got that one right in the vitals. Just tipped him over. Slugs are hitting hard. his baloney. We've been using these slugs uh, and the wind's blowing pretty hard from a right angle uh, to us. It's pretty chilly in the shade but the, the prairie dogs are coming up to warm up out there and uh, you can 
probably hear this on the mic, but the wind is it's blowing pretty good. But these slugs, man, they're they're cutting through the wind. It, it just doesn't react the same way as a pellet. Just crazy. Yeah, we'd have hell trying to do this with pellets. Yeah, I don't I don't think we'd be having much fun right now with pellets. But even 22, man, these little 22 cow slugs cutting through the wind and just devastating these prairie dogs, man. Good job, Dale. From Varmint Knockers, these things are, that's exactly what they are. Oh, that's a hit. We're just scanning the area. I can see one right now at 200 yards. I just ranged it. That's a far shot, especially in this wind. But uh, we're trying to wait and see if anything comes up a little closer. And I'm having a pretty good time. Considering that it's windy and it's a little bit cold, I'm having a blast. Yeah, this is awesome, man. All we're missing is a steak. <laughs> That's it. How far was that? You can hear that impact. That was 175 yards. 175. My camera zooms in 45 times and I can't even see out there. Oh yeah. Man. That was 8 minutes of wind. 20 minutes of angle on elevation. Holy smokes. That was a far shot. Yeah. And we're even shooting from uphill a little bit so... So here's what these little slugs are looking like, these 22 cal varmint knockers. Really big hollow point on these. Um, so they're pretty light, only about 22 grains. And uh, yeah, these little suckers are just whopping these freaking prairie dogs, man. They're just baking their potatoes hardcore. So the property that we're at right now, uh, the reason we're out here, um, putting in this work to get rid of these prairie dogs is because this is a horse property so they're becoming a really big problem for the horses they're stepping in the holes getting injured and uh, it's a really common way uh, really really common cause of death for animals is they'll step in prairie dog holes or ground squirrel holes and they'll break their limbs they'll have infection or they won't be able to get out they can't come back to um, get any food or anything like that and they end up dying out in the field so that's one of the reasons why we're getting rid of these uh, another one is that they carry the plague and I don't want that so uh, we're doing uh, you know a service out here for the people who own this property and in return we get to have some fun shoot some prairie dogs and uh, get some awesome scope camera footage for you guys and hopefully enjoy the stuff if you don't then get out get lost So after a couple hours of mucking up these prairie dogs, Dan and I went down to the field to try and recover as many of the prairie dogs that we could. And we knew some of them would be in their holes or made it back down into their holes because it was a body shot and they had enough adrenaline to get back down there. But for the most part, they were head shots or vital shots that dropped them right on the spot. And I think that's thanks to the slugs. Uh, these farm knocker slugs, as you can see here, did a really good job. This one took a 22 cal to the vitals and it was a pass through, but it definitely expanded as you'll see in Dan's videos. One of the things that I can attest to for doing prairie dog hunting, you know, um, a decent amount is that typically we can't recover them from the holes. Um, they have enough juice left in them to where they'll run down into the holes and they've just not been doing that. We've we found five or six or maybe even a few more just dead right in their holes. Um, and they didn't fall back in, so it's a uh, it's really a testament to these slugs and how well they work. So hopefully you guys can hear this on the camera, <laughs> the, the wind blowing. But 
it's it's crazy. These these slugs, the 30 cal slugs are brutal. So for those longer shots, but anything within 100 yards with these 22s has been just devastating. Drop, dropping them on the spot. So thanks for letting me use your wildcat. Yeah, my pleasure, man. Thanks for coming down so I can share this, share this experience. Of course, it's, man. It's always fun to do it by yourself, but it's even better if you have somebody to come out and do it with. Yeah. All right, guys, so not all these are going to be appropriate for YouTube, but there's uh, 11 of the ground squirrels. Um, and what, what what do you think, Dan? Probably our closest shot is 35 or 40 yards. 40 yards, I'd say 40 yards. Farthest ones that we shot that we have hits on, we weren't able to recover, but the farthest hits we've had were uh, just shy of 196 yards is what I ranged to the hole. So uh, just shy of 200 yards. And I'll point that one out. I, I'll have already pointed that one out on the scope cam footage, which one that was, but uh, it was a ways out there. Yeah, so, you know, we're, we're reaching out there, you know, a pretty good distance with these slugs, you know, with the FX Impact and the Wildcat Mark III. So you can definitely tell, I won't show it, but you can definitely tell which ones uh, were reaped by the 30 cal because um, they have because innards hanging out of their bodies. Um, but even still you know we've got some fat boys for sure but the uh those little 22 cal slugs are just smoking these guys so if you're serious about some prairie dog hunting or some pesting you got to get into some slugs because these things are just uh, phenomenal and they buck the wind so much better than a pellet will well that's where we're going to bring this one to a close guys uh there's definitely multiple parts coming and if you want to see another part right off the bat make sure you check out dan's channel the link is in the description, and you can see all of his shots on slow motion, as well as mine in slow motion. And it's just a great video, another perspective to check out from the same hunt. It's a really cool thing, and I was super excited to be able to do that with Dan. So make sure you check out the links in the description. And if you guys are interested in finding more content, check out the Airgun Podcast and go to www.theairgunpodcast.com. And you can find merchandise there, all the current episodes, and you can get yourself a sweet t-shirt.